Hello everyone, my name is Maha. I'm a graduate student at Stanford University in Chemical Engineering. I'm here today to talk about differential phase contrast X-ray imaging as my final project for the Modern Optics class. But before we delve into such an abstruse topic, let's take a moment to talk about X-rays. X-rays are a high frequency electromagnetic radiation first discovered in 1895 by Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen using the apparatus on the right. And this is the first X-ray image made public during Ronton's initial lecture before the Physical Medical Society in 1896. Since the discovery of X-rays in 1800s, they have been widely recognized as a very powerful technique to investigate the internal structure of substances. Their applications include medical diagnostics, security screening at airports, and material science. This specific image shows the deep discharge of a battery cathode using X-ray imaging technique. So, how does X-ray imaging work? This technique is based on the absorption of X-rays as they propagate through the sample. This is an X-ray source with a certain width. Producing X-rays, they go and hit this object. An X-ray with an intensity I0 propagates through the sample and undergoes an exponential decay in intensity, which is explained by the Beer's law. Here, mu is the absorption coefficient. Now, X-rays undergo varying degrees of attenuation in different parts of the object, which is a function of the material's density. This produces an image contrast at the detector. This technique usually works really well where high absorbing materials such as bones are surrounded by relatively weak absorbing materials such as soft tissue. Here you can see the chest x-ray. It shows a pretty good image contrast. The usefulness of this technique is limited in materials of very small density variations. For example, breast tissue, heart, or fluid interfaces. This is an absorption image of heart, and you can see it's pretty clear that it shows a very poor image contrast. So to significantly improve the image contrast in X-ray imaging, let's take a moment and go back at finding out how X-rays behave when they interact with matter. They undergo various phenomena such as scattering, absorption, on which conventional X-ray imaging is based. They also undergo refraction, and reflection, which we covered a lot in our modern optics class. I'm going to focus on refraction and reflection to increase the image contrast in X-ray imaging. When X-rays interact with matter, they undergo both attenuation and phase shift. Both the attenuation and phase shift can be described by the complex index of refraction, which is equal to 1 minus delta plus I beta. Delta is related to the phase shift and beta is related to attenuation. At high X-ray energies, the real part of the complex index of refraction becomes three to four orders of magnitude larger than the imaginary part. Thus, detecting phase shift can be much more sensitive than detecting absorption theoretically. And this is the basis of phase contrast X-ray imaging. A lot of people have tried different methods in the past to detect the phase shift of X-rays. These include crystal interferometry, crystal analyzer or analyzer-based imaging, propagation-based imaging, and grading interferometry. Here, crystal interferometry uses silicon crystal to split a monochromatic X-ray beam into two beams. One half of the beam moves through the object and the other does not. This is how it detects the phase shift of X-rays. Crystal analyzer uses a silicon analyzer to retrieve phase information. Propagation-based imaging varies the distance between the object and the detector to retrieve phase and absorption information. Now, crystal interferometry and analyzer-based imaging require a highly parallel and monochromatic X-rays because of the crystal optics used for imaging. Propagation-based imaging usually works really well with broad X-ray energy spectrum, 
However, it requires greater than 10 raised to the power minus 6 spatial coherence, which is only available through microfocus X-ray sources or synchrotron radiation. Thus, these requirements make the use of these three different techniques very difficult as an affordable and scalable technology for industrial applications. Today, I'm going to focus on in grading interferometry as an alternative approach to detect phase shift and improve the image contrast in X-ray imaging. So, what is three grading differential phase contrast X-ray imaging? As you can see, it uses three different gradings, G0, which is source grading with the period P0, phase grading G1, and G2, which is an amplitude grading. Let's look at the scanning electron micrographs of these three gradings. You can see that all of these gradings are made of silicon wafer using various photog photolithography techniques in the clean room. G0 and G2 are then electroplated with gold at the end of the fabrication process. So let's talk about how this technique works. There is an X-ray source with the width W. It produces X-rays. These X-rays go through the source grading G0. This G0 acts as an absorption mask, where it masks the X-rays coming from the tube source and produces an array of individually coherent but mutually incoherent sources. These X-rays then go through the phase grading and undergo diffraction at an angle alpha. Then they go through the amplitude grading, which and that helps in analyzing the phase shift. And this also helps in producing higher resolution than what can be achieved by pixels only. Now, what happens when we place an object in this system? We usually place an object between the G0 grading and the G1 grading. So this object is placed between G0 and G1 grading. From G0, we have X-rays coming, which are coherent, and then these X-rays hit this object and undergo refraction. Then they undergo diffraction at an angle alpha as they propagate through G1 grading. This angle alpha is directly proportional to the local gradient of the object's phase, as quantified by this equation. The final step is the G2 grading which is moved at various positions and the intensity variations are recorded at the detector. Let's now focus on the plot of intensity versus grading position. Here we can see two different waveforms, the blue and the red one. The blue one corresponds to the reference which is taken without the object in the beam path and the red one is the one which is taken with the object in the x-ray beam path. It is clearly evident that both of these waveforms differ in the, both the phase and the amplitude. DPC is the difference in phase of the object and the reference. Absorption is the intensity of the object divided by that of the reference. Dark field or visibility it is the visibility of the object divided by the reference. So this is how DPC X-ray imaging works. DPC X-ray
imaging differs from traditional X-ray imaging in the sense that it gives three different outputs, attenuation, phase, dark field, or small angle scatter from one experiment. All of these can be combined together to uniquely identify unknown materials. And today I'm going to specifically talk about the application of DPC for early stage breast cancer diagnosis. You can see here, this is an absorption image, phase contrast, and C is the dark field. These are the mammography images of an ablated breast that show the complete remission of a cancer after a chemotherapy treatment. Here, the DPC image clearly depicts this collagen strands, and the dark field is much more sensitive to macrocalcifications macrocalcif than the absorption image. This study, published by the British Journal of Radiology in 2014, is a clear demonstration of the impact of phase contrast on clinical radiology. This TPC is a very promising technique to study this um, for breast cancer diagnosis. Thank you.